Hello, this is Mark Boyer, and this is a good news story pointing out that we of the Marijuana Party of Canada, through the Vancouver Centre Electoral District Association, an EDA, is opening a vapor lounge and compassion club on Granville Street in Vancouver, right in the middle of the party area, you know, like what's called the club zone. And in order to do this, uh, we initially had gotten some static from the city and which forced us to uh, show an upper hand. And this was done on December 11th with what this notice of understanding, notice of intent posted on the scrib wall and uh, attached to this video. Now, in this notice, uh, we make it to Vancouver City Mayor and Council. Okay, now there's a, that's a legal difference. Okay, there is being in the city of Vancouver, and there is Vancouver City, which is not a corporation. Okay, it's this entity, the, this space. Okay, now there's a distinct difference. Okay, and that's outlined in the Territories Act. Okay, now the reality is, is we're standing under Section One of the Charter, which protects us to hold a defense that is prescribed by law. And I wrote an entire pamphlet on that, on our membership thing, and it, it's well worth look going back to. I, I, I'll try not to refer back to it, okay, in this video. Now, bottom line is, as prescribed by law, every electoral, dis every electoral district association in Canada does not have a building permit. Not one of them has it. Not one of them has an occupational license. Not one of them needs a safety inspection. You know, it's not as if they'll turn away a safety inspector. You can invite him in. He just can only make suggestions, and that's about it. Okay? Now, this is because there's what's called separation of jurisdictions. Now, separation of jurisdiction means we are a federal party operating inside a municipality and uh, we don't need a permit. In fact, it's against the law for us to get a permit because that would mean that the city of Vancouver, this corporation called the city of Vancouver, could impose rules and regulations on a federal political party and it has no such right. Period. It has no such right. Okay, it's called separation of powers. And as I said, not one electoral district in Canada association office has a uh, occupational license, a building permit, or anything else. And for this, we address it in point two. He says, the territory being vacated by the city includes 1058 and 1062 Granville in order to be seized under Section 8 Territories Act and placed under the jurisdiction of our Party Marijuana Party EDA. Now, what we're doing is, is we're literally, with this notice, telling the city that 1058 and 1062 Granville are as if they have for rent signs on them. There are no tenants in that, in that unit because it's not in the jurisdiction of the city of Vancouver. Huge break to the landlord because, and to us, because all of those occupational licenses, business licenses, vendors, like all these, uh, you know, your, your garbage license, your, oh, everything, your parking a lot, all those fees add up to tens of thousands of dollars a year. And we don't have to pay them. Because a city, the corporation of the city of Vancouver, can't send us a federal political party those bills. Because we don't have an occupational license. And by law, we don't have to have one. So if anyone out there cares to open a compassion club, they can in their city by filing a notice of understanding similar to this in uh, with the mayor. Okay. Now it, this will vary slightly. Some places are principalities, some places are, are municipalities, but everywhere in BC it's a municipality, and this format works. Okay. Now the reality is is no, what we're doing is telling the mayor how we're going to operate. We're not asking the mayor. We're not making an application to do something. We're telling the mayor how we're going to operate. 
Okay, and basically it says in order to outline the structure of this understand understanding, the the EDA will enter into several arm's length agreement with co-op entities that operate within properly established accounting practices in order to accommodate our EDA's political goals and objectives. Now, on that point, compassion clubs throughout Canada are set under the Societies Act and are established, most of them are established as a society. Now, the Societies Act also covers political parties, clubs like Masons, and co-ops. Okay? Now, if you look up the Societies Act, it says there directly that a society cannot be political, legal. But then saying that a compassion club uh, has to operate under the Societies Act and it cannot be political is an oxymoron by itself because the very act of opening a compassion club is political. Okay, it's it, 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 it's it's outrageous. Okay, but bottom line is the solution is to operate under a co-op. Okay, now in here we're pointing out that in the spirit of cooperation with existing co uh, compassion clubs and rules and regulations that the city's put down of how you can attract members, we make it clear that we are going to operate within the same rules and parameters as the other compassion clubs. And we have one distinct advantage. At all times, we have either one or two medical practitioners who are authorized to give you a, a, a prescription for marijuana. And all you have to do is pay these ladies $60 and you'll get about an hour, sometimes more, real medical interview. These girls are trying their best to attract you to use them when you're sick. Okay, now in th that's 60 bucks. Okay, and with that, you get a card. With that card, you'll have your name, you'll have, you know, a picture, it'll have, and you'll be able to bring it to other compassion clubs who will, the only thing they'll do is call us, confirm that they have the, uh, the proper, you know, that we went through the proper procedures. They'll ask for uh, a confirmation, which we'll gladly do. All, all the, all 10 or so compassion clubs in this town cooperate that way. And this way, they can go to any club they want. Okay? But at our club, we'll give a cash discount at the end of the year through the well-established rules and regulations that are established under the Co-op Act. We want to be protected by having good books. Okay? Because that's the way you eliminate all the arguments of your criminals. Okay? Uh, we are using a very clever application of the Longley loophole and everything under this, at this place will be charging PST, which is party sales tax. Okay. And we do that for very good reasons. Okay. See, under a political party, uh, many times, more than once, I have gone to the city or to Revenue Canada and filled out a GST form and now it's an HST form. And if you honestly fill out this form as a political party association, virtually every line the officer will say, uh, we can't give you a license until you change that. Yes to a no. Or we can't give you a license until you change that. No to a yes. And in reality, you have to lie to get a GSC or an HST or a PA or, a, you know, these numbers. You have to lie. And we insist that we don't lie. And every, what you do is you ask them, well, well if, if I don't change that, uh, would you give me a put it in writing that you don't want to give me a GST number or an HST number? Okay, and, and they'll go no. Okay, what I did is I I wait. I then filed a form with the government that asks the question of if we operate with properly set books and collect taxes, can we operate at arm's length through three part fiduciary trust agreements with officers of the marijuana party? to operate compassion clubs, as long as we collect taxes. And that's a big, as long as we collect taxes. And the bottom line is, they wouldn't answer the question. So I filed with the Supreme Court of 
Ontario of, uh, of BC here, and they sent me packing the Supreme Court of Canada in a week. A week after filing, let alone a week, they I got shipped to the Supreme Court of Canada. Now, and I'm I'm still there. Okay, I'm still parked at the Supreme Court of Canada. Now, the reality is is uh, we do this because what well, basically we're charging a 10% party sales tax PST, and we're paying it. Well, the right pocket, our electoral district is collecting it, and. At the end of every day, we take 10% of the gross sales of the club and we take it from our right pocket and we put it in our left pocket. And that becomes party pool money. And that money can now be used for all kinds of legitimate purposes that an, an electoral district has a legitimate right to spend money on, which is to attract social and political participation and operate a compassion club and have enough money to run a candidate in the next election. That's why we're allowed to have generate money to protect our beliefs. As I said in a Supreme Court motion, uh, and the judge, I tricked him into saying yes, okay? And, and that's a trick where you close doors, okay? And I came to the Supreme, I came to the Supreme Court judge in Alberta, where I was trying to convince him that I did not have money with the proceeds of crime, okay? And I explained to him that all of this money was obtained through a compassion club through the Vancouver, through, uh, through our Vancouver EDA. And I explained to him, it says, if a political party, as an officer of a political party, if I operated a compassion club at arm's length from the party and this, uh, uh, and I offered protection by the party to these members, and if I did that in, and I did not return some money back to the party, that would be called fraud. And the judge agreed. And I went, therefore, if I do give money to the political party, then it's not fraud. And he choked. He choked. Okay. He knew he got trapped into it. Okay. And basically, the reason we're paying 10% party sales tax to ourselves is when they get around to taxing it. Okay. On that day, okay, we will turn over the right to collect this now HST through our club and we will get representation for these taxes. Otherwise, we're not going to agree. And in the meantime, as long as we're collecting it and using it properly, they simply cannot ask us to pay the taxes to them until we have an agreement. And we actually would rather, you know, would not we really rather, but it would be far better for the entire movement that we pay HST instead of PST to ourselves. Okay? Now, there, it's a big legality doing that. It's a huge legality paying it, okay? Because there's several compassion clubs right now that are facing charges for not paying taxes. You know, uh, not collecting HST, PST, or GST on their uh, on their goods and services, and uh, the marijuana party has this beautiful long lead loophole that allows you to collect it as long as they don't want it. Isn't that cool? Now, the bottom line is, uh, in this club, uh, we're going to operate as the vapor lounge, which is downstairs. It's a beautiful thing. It's five thousand square feet. Fully decked out bar. Well, that never got a liquor license, okay? And we don't want a liquor license because then the liquor board could tell us that we can't operate a compassion club in there or a vapor lounge. Now, a vapor lounge is where people can come in and smoke their own pot in vapor, you know, in, in uh, vapor uh, units that we rent to them or uh, they smoke joints or whatever. It's a safe place to smoke pot. And the marijuana party can create this but space and offer safe haven to anyone who wants to smoke a joint and be entertained. We're going to have bands. The bar, uh, we're doing this under a private members club. So everyone who join, comes in will have to join the marijuana party, and that's free. Okay, so all you have to do is be a holder of a piece of paper that's an app, you know, that is actually a legal bound piece of paper uh, by Elections Canada. and 
by holding this piece of paper and having it in your pocket, you're a marijuana party member. And everyone who comes into that place will have to be of voting age and hold a marijuana party membership. And once they're down there, that allows them to smoke pot and have a freedom of expression. It will not allow, no one will sell herb in that establishment, not even the management. Okay? If you want herb, you go upstairs to the Compassion Club and become a member just like any other Compassion Club, which is not very hard. Okay? And then we'll sell you pot, just like any other club. And then you can bring it downstairs and smoke it there. If anybody bring, you know, now the reality is, is the reason we're doing private members club is because this beautiful wet bar that's there is going to be selling uh, smoothies and pot smoothies, you know, coladas and can of coladas, uh, espresso coffee and Canna espresso coffees and canna cappuccinos and all of these. And we're going to have regular milkshakes and these beautiful, creamy, chocolate, frosty milkshakes, pot infused. We're going to have an entire menu of things that you can uh, eat and drink uh, that are really delicious and healthy juices that are about the same price. As a jug of juice, and these juice, I'm using them as an example. There's a lot of them in Vancouver. You know, the same price, you can buy a, a juice out of jug of juice. You can buy a, a, a better quality juice from us. And for two bucks more, you can medicate it. Okay? And, you know, the reality is, is we now have a wet bar that's serving something that will get you high. Instead of drunk. And most people will be able to handle about one of these an hour. And they're truly delicious. And just like a bar, if you take too much, you, 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 you'll be, get stung by a first pass effect. But you know what? You're in a club. You agreed to the terms and conditions of being in this club by being a party member. You know, and it's how you do it. It's how you protect yourself. Okay. And the reason you're protecting yourself is really fundamental. Okay. We work and live under what's called the supremacy of parliament, okay? And it's being totally abused by the harpster government, okay? Now, the reality, under Section 1, it covers everything that's prescribed by law, okay? And the under the law, constitutional law, under the supremacy of parliament, the only thing the officially recognized party in charge can't do is walk on the rights of a political, uh, an officially recognized party. Uh, in, of a, that's it. They can't. That means the parties in power at the mayor's office, the parties in power at the provincial office, and the parties in power at the federal offices cannot interfere with what is a guarantee of a political party, which is freedom of expression. Okay, which is what we're doing. And this, ex and if you look up the definition of freedom of expression, it says, and this extends to protecting beliefs that the majority considers wrong or false. And it's totally irrelevant that they think that marijuana is an evil drug. The Bible says it's a food given by God in thanksgiving. And everyone knows that everything God gave in Thanksgiving is good. And it's been done in Thanksgiving for medical benefit. <laughs> that's the Bible, 1 Timothy 4. Okay? And that's just the way it is. We're standing under God, which is what we're supposed to be able to do under the Constitution, that's why we're standing under the Territories Act and common law jurisdiction. Okay? Uh, it, it's tight. It's a very tight way of doing it. But frankly, public officials all over the place are the criminals. We do really do live in tyranny. And basically, we're making an ironclad case that if they do care to bust us, uh, we've got a great case that will take us to court 
real quick. Okay? Well, we're, you know, we're doing our best not to get busted. Basically, when you set up a notice of understanding and intent, the only thing the city can do is observe to see if you're breaking the rules that you made for yourself. Okay, and if we don't break the rules that we created for ourselves so that the city can live in harmony with us, then uh, they'll shut us down. And that's all there is to it. Because by law, they are the majority in power who cannot exercise their reckless abandon of law onto our political party. Because under freedom of expression, we have a guarantee to protect these beliefs. So we're entering into what our party leader calls a social experiment. And uh, check out the, oh, my menu. I will, I will, in the next few days, I'll be posting the menu. We're doing large promos of this venture. And uh, come on down and enjoy. We're going to have reggae nights. We're going to have open mic nights. We're going to have... Uh, Bands, all kinds of great bands coming in, and uh, no alcohol. Smoke your buds, drink our smoothies, have a good time, and uh, it's something new. No one's ever, no one's ever tried it on this scale. And uh, the worst they can say is no, and uh, we'll end up in court, which we'd rather not. But uh, you don't enter into ventures without having a real good case, and. This is how you do it. You start off by filing a notice of understanding, a notice of intent to take yourselves out of the registry of the city of Vancouver and place yourself in Vancouver City. Uh, what can I say? I uh, wish us the best of luck and come on down and uh, participate. Uh, we should be up and roaring before Christmas. Uh, there's a whole bunch of things we have to do before opening and uh, Come on down and have a, a light up, light up for us, okay? And uh, have a good time. Thank you very much.